Hello, we are on Math 6, Q4, Week 4 no modules, and our lesson is all about constructing pie graph. Alright, let's have a review. Okay, so ito yung nandun sa module nyo. Yeah, it's a very good, or it's a very nice review. Okay, so solve the cross number puzzle. Ayan, so ito yung for the across, ito naman for the down. So, sabutan natin. Okay, starting with here, across, letter A. 50% of 50, pag sinabing 50%, kalahate yun, di ba? So, kalahate na 50, that is 25, right? And then, point 10, or that's just point 1 of 500, move ka lang ng isa dito eh, di ba? Kasi point 1 lang yan eh. Pwede mong tanggalin yung 0 dyan. So, move ng isa, this is just 50 for letter B. Ayan. And then, for letter C, 1 half of 138, this is um, 69. Letter C, 69. Right? And then, 2 squared by 10, or 2 squared times 10, so 2 squared is just 4, times 10, that is 40, so this is just 40. Ayan. And then letter E, that's 20% of 360. Now remember, ang 10% ay pwede kang mag-move lang ng isa. 10% ay 36. E di dalawang 10%, uh, that is 72. Yan. And then, 12 times, uh, 2 times 12 is 24. Plus 8, that is 32. So for F, that would be 32. And then G, one complete revolution is 360 degrees. Ba? Yan. So, G, that's 360 degrees. And then, for down, you have 25% of 40. 25% is just one-fourth. And one-fourth ng, uh, ng 80 is, so 25% of 80 pala, that is 20 lang. So, dinagdagan lang natin ng 0, pababa. And then, letter B ngayon, pababa. Okay? 0. 0.15 times 360. That is 54. And then letter C, may sagot na tayo. Oh. 3 fourths of 80, that is 60 nga. And then letter D, ayan din, pababa. 7 squared, that is 7 times 7, and that is 49, di ba? And then letter E, uh, where's letter E? Ayan, may sagot na rin tayo. Okay, so letter E actually is 4 cubed plus 6. And this is 4 cubed is 64 plus 6, that is 70. And then for letter F, ayan, may sagot na rin tayo. That is 2 times 12 is 24 plus 12, that is 36, diba? And then ito na lang, ang wala pa tayong sagot, 12% of 1,000. Ang 10% ng 1,000 is 100. And then yung 1% is 10, diba? So dalawang 10, that's 20. Dagdag yung 100, that is 120. So, 1 na lang ang kulang natin dyan. Okay? Alright. So, pie graph. Ano ba talaga ang isang pie graph? Okay. So, we have an example here of a pie graph. And, circle graphs. So, it could be called circle graph. Circle graphs or pie graphs show the relationships of the parts of the whole. We use this graph if we want to compare the quantity with the whole data. So, yung whole data is 100% and each quantity is a part or a percentage of the whole data. The pie graph in particular is a type of graph that is useful in analyzing polls and money or resources allocation. Kaya siya ginagamit kasi isang tingin mo pa lang kasi makikita mo na asan yung mas pinakamalaki at asan yung pinakamaliit. Okay. Right, so let's have this example problem. The members of the math club elected their officers. There are four candidates for president and 100 members voted. And then Joy received 35 votes. Ronald received 28 votes. Carol has 22 votes. And Miguel has 15 votes. Okay, so A, to construct a pie graph, follow these follow this steps. Step 1, find the percent of vote that each candidate received. So, 
for Joy, alam natin, 35 yung kay Joy, di ba? So, out of 100 na bumoto, it would be 35 over 100. Ayan, kung isulat mo ito in decimal, move ka lang ng dalawa, di ba? Kasi dalawa ang zero dito. Eh. So, i-move mo yung decimal point dito ng isa, dalawa. So, this is now point 35. And then, to change this into um, percent, as long as hundreds naman yan, eh, di diretsyo na yan, 35 hundreds, 35%. Yan. And then, we have Ronald. Okay, Ronald naman, it's 28 over 100. So, that would be 28 or 0.28 or 28 hundredths. And then, 28 hundredths is equal to 28%. Okay? Sobrang dali lang yan. Then, Carol, we have 22 hundredths. And then, in decimal, that's 22 hundredths. And then, in percent, that is 22%. Okay? Pareho lang pagbasa nito at saka nito. 22 hundredths, 22 hundredths, and then since nasa hundredths, hundredths, percent is per hundred, didiretso ka na, 22 percent. And then we have Miguel, 15 hundredths, and that is 15 hundredths as well in decimal, and then percent, that is 15 percent. Kapag i-add mo yan, it would total up to 100 percent. Alright? Next step, step 2, determine how many degrees correspond to each percent. The whole circle measures 360 degrees. So, yung 35% ng 360, okay, kocompute natin. So, 35% is 0.35, it times mo with 360, sagot would be 126 degrees. Kasi 360 ang complete rotation, di ba? Right, so we have the next one, 28% of 360 degrees, and that is 0.28 times 360 degrees, and that is 100.8 degrees. So para mawala yung decimal natin, round off natin to, so this will be 101 na. And then the next one is 22% of 360 degrees, and that would be 0.22 times 360 degrees, and that is just... 79.2 degrees and then tanggalin natin yung point 2 round off na round off ulit natin so this is round down na diba so this is now 79 degrees and then the last one is 15 de per percent 15 percent of 360 so that would be 0. 0.15 times 360 degrees and that is equal to 54 percent kung i-add mo yung lahat ito lahat ito tsaka ito 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 it would go back to 360 degrees. So, ito na ngayon ang gagawin natin para magawa na natin ang ating pie graph. Alright. Now, next, draw a circle, determine the center, and draw a radius. Use a protractor with the center as the vertex and the radius as a side. Measure any of the angles found in step 2. So, hindi ibig sabihin na measure any of the angles. Hindi mo na i-measure lahat. Dapat i-measure mo lahat kasi dapat papasok lahat yung data mo. Okay? Um, ano lang dito? Pipili ka lang kung anong angle doon ang gusto mong uunahin. Okay? And then, draw a line to show the division. Susundan natin to pa isa-isa lang. Okay? So, first, draw a circle. Ayan. Ayan na yung circle natin. Sabi, determine the center. So, more or less, na dito yung center natin. ba? And then, draw a radius. Ayan. Okay. Kasi magiging basis mo itong radius na to. Okay. Gagamit ka ng protractor and then uh, the center of the protractor ay dapat nandito. Okay. And then ito would serve as a side. Okay. So, ganito lang gagawin natin. So, lagyan natin ng protractor. Ayan. So, ito na ngayon ang center ng protractor. Yung radius mo dito served as the side. Okay. Ito yung yung block na part dito sa, sa protractor, dapat um, ano rin siya, pantay din siya doon sa radius natin para tamang-tama yung measurement dito. So, yung unang measurement kanina is 126, ayun yung para kay Joy, di ba? So, 126 mula dito hanggang dito kung titignan mo yung measurement dito is 90 degrees, di ba? Right? So, 126 is more or less nandito. So, sabi dyan, measure any of the angle and then draw a line to 
show the division. So, lagyan natin ng mark. Okay? Mark natin. So, ayan yung 126. And then, draw a line to show the division. So, lagyan natin ng linya. Ayan na. So, ito na ngayon ang 126 degrees mo. At ito na ngayon ang part na ito ang para kay um, Joy, which was um, 35 volts. ba? Okay. So, sunod natin uh, i-measure is the 101 degrees. Then, lagyan natin ulit ng protractor. And then, mula dito, okay, measure ka ng 101 degrees. So, more or less nandito. So, markahan natin ulit. Ayan. And then, ulit, draw a line. Ayan. And then, after dun sa so 101, ito 79. Kasi nag-round round down tayo nun, di ba? 79.2. So, 79 ang sunod. So, gamit tayo ulit ang another protractor. Okay. And then, um, sukat ulit. Okay. So, mula dito, hanapin natin yung 79. So, more or less, nandito yung 79. Ayan. And then, draw a line ulit. Ayan. So, kompleto na ngayon. So, ito na ngayon yung last, which was 54 degrees. Now, uh, it need not be um, exactly or perfect na nagawa mo. Basta lang, maipakita mo ng maayos asan yung pinakamalaki, asan yung pinakamaliit. Okay? So, let's go on to the next step. Alright, so... The next step is, label the sectors and put a title to your graph. So, ito yung graph natin. Ayan. Okay. So, label the sectors. Ibig sabihin, yung mga parts na to. Yun yung sectors. Okay. So, dito, this is 35% of the whole. Okay. And, ito yung para kay Joy. Okay. And then, ito is 28%. Ito yung para kay Ronald. 22%, this is for Carol. And then, 15%, that is for Miguel. And then, ang ating title nito would be Distribution of Votes per Candidate for President. So, kung meron ka ng ganito, kompleto na, pwede ka na sumagot ng mga tanong, di ba? Right. So, letter B, answer the following questions based on the graph. So, ito yung graph natin. Okay. Then, number one, who earned the highest percentage of vote for president? So, isang tingin mo palang dito, kita mo na na ito yung pinakamalaki. Okay, so, ang sagot natin dito would be joy. Next one is, who earned the lowest percent or percentage of vote for president? So, ito yung kay Miguel. Kay Miguel ang pinakamaliit, ba? And that is 15%. So, sagot natin dito would be Miguel. And then, the next one is, how many percentage of vote did Carol get? So, ito yung pinakamag pinakamadali kasi uh, 22% lang. Titignan mo na. Okay? Ah, pareho lang pala madali lahat. Alright. So, 22%. That is for number 3. And the number 4, what is the difference between the percentage vote of Joy and Miguel? So, ano yung difference? So, i-minus mo yung dalawa. Ito yung kay Joy. Ito yung kay Miguel. So, 35% minus 15. That would be 20%. And finally, what is the total percentage of votes of Ronald and Carol? So, kung titignan mo, Ronald, Carol, 28 and 22, that is 50%. So, kalahate yung sa kanilang dalawa. So, ito yung sinasabi ko na your division need not be perfect kasi uh, kung mahalata nyo, parang hindi masyadong hindi nga masyadong perfecto. Dapat sana straight line ito, ba? Pero it need not be perfect. Basta lang at least na ipakita mo ng maayos kung anong uh, anong part ang para kay Joy, para kay Ronald, Carol, and Miguel. Hindi naman yung obviously na sobrang um, liit ng kay Miguel or sobrang laki ng kay Joy na hindi na tama. Okay? Right? So, okay, so subukan natin to, ha? The pie graph shows the favorite juice flavor of 600 children. So, this time, gawa na yung pie graph. Sasagot na lang tayo ng mga questions. Okay. So, the pie graph shows favorite juice flavor of children. Ito yung title. And then, ito na yung mga um, laman ng um, graph mo. So, we have here buko juice, which is 
150. So, 150 ang bata na nagsabing paborito nila ang buko juice. And then, 200 for mango juice. We have 150 for the London juice. And then, Guyabano juice, it's 100. So, tignan natin yung mga questions. Right? How many percent of the children choose Guyabano juice? Now, this time, ang nakalagay dito is the number of children. Kasi kung i-add mo yan, 100, 150, 200, and 150, you would come up with 600. So, wala yung percentage. So, dito, kailangan nating i-calculate yung percentage. So, yung 100 dito would be out of 600. So, that is 100 over 600. And then, kung i-divide mo yan, you would come up with a non-terminating decimal. So, Um, um, ano, uh, rounding off, okay, this will be 17%. Kasi percentage ang hinanap eh. Percent, di ba? Percent pala. And then, number two, what fraction? No, ngayon naman, fraction ang hinanap. What fraction of the children choose buko juice? So, buko, that is uh, 150 for buko juice. And then, Out of 600. So, 150 out of 600. And then, reducing to lowest term, pwedeng i-divide ang 600 by 150. So, 150 divided by 150, that is 1. 600 is divided by 150 is 4. So, ang sagot natin is 1 fourth. So, ito na yung pinaka-sagot mo. 1 fourth ang fraction of the children who choose buko juice. And then, number 3. How many children choose the London juice? So, dito, ito yung pinakamadali. Kasi dito, nag-calculate kayo. Dito, titignan mo lang how many. The London juice, it'd be 150 children, di ba? And then, four, what percentage of the children choose mango juice? Again, percentage na naman ang hinanap. So, kuhanin natin ang mango juice, that is 200, over 600. So, that would be, ayan. And then, um, computing, you would come up with 0.333. This is actually one-third. So, lalabas ito na um, non-terminating decimal. So, one-third is just equal to 0.333. And then, that would just be 33%. And then, number five, find the ratio of the number of children who choose mango juice to the number of children who choose Buko juice. So, ang gagawin natin dito is ratio. And a ratio can be written in fraction and column form, di ba? So, kung fraction, start tayo with the number of children who choose mango juice. So, that would be 200 over the number of children who choose buko juice. That is 150. So, that would be 200 over 150. Or, basahin mo yan in ratio as 200 is to 150. And then, reducing to lowest term, this is just 4 thirds. Kasi divisible by 50. Diba? Ito, 4 na 50. Ito, 3 ng 50. So, 4 thirds. So, ito na ngayon ang ratio of the number of children who choose mango juice to the number of children who choose buko juice. Ibig sabihin lang nun, bawat 4 na bata na gusto ang mango juice, may tatlong bata na ang gusto ay buko juice. Okay? And then, since ang ratio can be written in colon form, pwede ganito rin ang sagot mo. So, 200 is to 150 or reduce to lowest term. That would be 4 is to 3. Alright? Okay, so, remember, to construct a pie graph, follow these steps. Okay? First, Step 1, find percent of the whole amount in each part of the data. Step 2, determine how many degrees correspond to each percent. The whole circle measures 360 degrees. Kaya kuhanin mo ang degrees that correspond, how many degrees that correspond to each percent. Kaya nga, kinakalculate natin kanina o sinusold natin kanina yung percent para makuha din natin yung degrees. Okay? And then, step 3, draw a circle and then determine the center and draw a radius. Kasi yung radius na yun would use as your uh, side, di ba? So, use a protractor with the center as the vertex and then the radius as a side. Measure any of the angles found in step 2. 
then draw a line to show the division. Okay, so lahat ng um, representation dapat, okay, lahat ng angles dapat doon, gagawin mo. You, you may start with any of the angles. And then lastly, you would have to label the sectors and put a title to your graph.